Like your favorite LFL players and teams and receive breaking news stories. The LFL's official Facebook page, facebook.com slash mylfl. Back to the Legends Cup here in Seattle, Washington. Bobby Duco, Mitch Mortaza. And speaking of legends, Audra Marie is with one. Hey guys, I'm down here on the field with Liz Gorman. Liz, you just got inducted into the Hall of Fame, the second person ever. Tell me, what's your past 24 hours been like? Oh my word, it's been amazing. I got off the plane and I was able to meet my mother who flew in from New York. And it's just been amazing. I've been able to rekindle with old players I played with on and off the field and being able to just talk to the league owners and just, it's been amazing. I mean, the whole time it's been nice to just be able to have memories with people and just come back on the field and be here to watch the girls play. It's been a crazy 24 hours, but I love it. Love it. So happy I got to watch you go through all of that and get to meet you. Thank you okay. so much. Back to you guys. A true legend of the game, Liz Gorman. I know you had an opportunity to coach against her quite a bit. There's nobody that deserves a Hall of Fame more than Liz Gorman. The first game she played against us, 14 solo tackles and an interception. Unbelievable. Now a fourth and goal. And that is not going to get there. Megan Hansen and company have this place absolutely electric. Insane play by the Seattle defense. Twice in a row, Chris Del Harris, the number one runner in the league, stops short from getting the one yard. Wow, what a play by Seattle. Seattle stacked the box, fully anticipating Chris Del Harris and Megan Hansen. What a game she's having. Megan Hansen, she comes to play every night. She plays like every play is her last. I cannot believe they stopped Harris twice in a row. Chris Del Harris has been putting this league of fire the last two years, I don't think I've seen her this controlled in a half of football before. That's KK Matheny, ball backed up to the two yard line, so a deep start for Seattle does not matter. That is the bull, Stevie Schnorr, carrying for six yards. This is classic football. Stevie Schnorr, the bull, going against Ali Alberts, all fantasy, and all fantasy, Yashi Rice. Watch Schnorr takes the football. Yashi Rice simply can't hit to her. Ali Alberts comes up and hits a wall. Wow. Alberts struggling there against Stevie Schnorr, but leading the league in tackling. Not to mention she has four interceptions, as we said earlier. Now a second and four ball at the eight yard line. That's Jenna Weiss at center. Weiss, part of that nucleus of free agents Seattle signed this offseason. Now balls at the eight yard line, Matheny under center. Inside handoff, Danica Brace. Brace getting to the outside for 10 yards and that'll be a Seattle first down. A simple Y underneath handoff to Danica Brace and you cannot stop her for less than five yards. Get the fuck over here! I told you you were there, wake the fuck up! Oh, Joe! I saw it! Wake the fuck up! God damn it! I have never seen Coach Keith Hack this upset with his team. He has them ready to play, but they're not playing tonight. He is on fire right now. Watch this. He, he said he had this play ready. They've watched this play over and over, but they got faked out. This is a Chicago defense that was ranked number one coming into the Legends Cup, only allowing 70 points and a record 16 turnover margin. That is an impressive defense, but they've got their hands full against Seattle. They sure do. This defense right now, it's on their heels. Coach Pack, I have never seen him that upset. Ball at the 18-yard line. This looks like a reverse to Fowler, and Fowler running into Megan Hansen, and Chantel Taylor, what a game she's having. Wow, Chantel Taylor, she woke up after a pack yelled at her like that. There's rough and there's dirty players. Chantel Taylor is rough and dirty. She came to play on that one. That is a five yard loss. That'll take Seattle back to the 13 yard line. Taylor and Yashi Rice both having career years at the DN position. Yashi Rice, of course, the sister of Simeon Rice. A long-time defensive end for the Tampa Bay Bucks. Simeon was a great defensive end, and he coached these two during the offseason, and it's showing tonight. These two are two of the best in the LFL. Second and 15. Matheny under center. 
Hopkins flanked to the left side. They're going to look to Hopkins down the field. Actually, Brent Renda on a go pattern. That is their deep target, the lanky 5'11 receiver has absolutely become K.K. Medini's favorite target. Play action pass, Bryn Renda goes deep, she is open. K.K. Matheny just a little bit longer, that would be six points for Seattle. Now a third and 15. Ball at the 13 yard line, this will be a crucial area as Seattle cannot punt. L LFL rules will allow you to punt if the ball is backed up inside your own 10. This being out to the 13, this will become four down territory for Seattle. As Matheny remains in the shotgun, observing the defense. Dropping back to pass, looking over the middle, has a receiver overthrown and intercepted. That is Dominique Collins, the all-fantasy corner reading Matheny. Bad pass by Matheny, but we mentioned Dominique Collins, she tracks the ball as well as anybody in the league. We do have a penalty on that play. Legal formation on the defense. Inside wow. the three yard neutral zone. Five yard penalty, still third down. That is head referee Michael Livingston. And this absolutely saves Seattle. The call is correct. You have to have a three yard cushion. They only had two and a half there. Dominique Collins makes an outstanding interception. Mojo will be back on Chicago's side, but that was the correct call by the official. That'll move the ball up for Seattle. Creating a third and 10 after a sure interception by Dominique Collins. The Seattle offense will get another shot. Trips left with Stevie Schnorr, Hopkins, and Brent Renda. Matheny from the shotgun looking to the left side. Does not have a receiver. Now a shovel pass. You got to get ready for it. What are you going to do if you're up there? What, how are you going to help me? Because I thought you were running, I was going to block. I'm kind of on Stevie Schnorr's side on that one. She's blocking. She doesn't know if KK Matheny is going to run or pass. So she's trying to protect her. Right now, she's trying to make something happen, and Schnorr is trying to block, not expecting the ball. And as we talked about it earlier, Seattle is not inside their own 10-yard line, so they cannot punt. They will have to go for it on 4th and 10. Ball at the 18-yard line. Some great aerials today from LFL Films. And Bobby, this is a monster down for this offense. Big play for the Seattle offense, but Chicago needs to come up with a stop. From the shotgun, Matheny again looking to the left side, had a receiver. Brent Renda wide open. And we may have another penalty on this Chicago defense. I see what's going on. I see what's going on. That's bullshit. Pass interference. Defense. Number four. Ten-yard penalty in the previous spot. Automatic first down. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Fucking bullshit. That's DeAndre Fry. They're very high on her at corner position. She had a tough time with Lauren Ziegler last week and now has her hands full with Brent Renda. That's probably why they're going after her. I didn't see much there at all. She was running a deep hook route. Fry was on her, but I didn't see too much action for Fry. Yeah, from the angles that we saw, unless there was contact before that, that was a very ticky-tack call. Now creating a first and 10 at the 22 of Chicago. Matheny back to pass, looking in the flat, has Stevie Schnorr, and Schnorr gains two yards. Good check down by K.K. Matheny, getting the ball to Schnorr. God, you wait too fucking long. That's just a horrible swing. Tell her to. Fucking A. Coach Michelson upset that K.K. Matheny waited too long. He wanted Schnorr to get the ball immediately. He'd be, she'd be one-on-one -on -one out there with Neck and Nawani, and you got to take Schnorr in that matchup. God damn it! You see that fucking swing? That's a terrible swing. Fucking running a fucking seam route. Coach Michelson not happy at the execution of this offense. Second and eight. Now the Seattle offense in a position to really take command of this game. That's Melee Gilmore in motion on the reverse. Great open field tackle. That's Neka Nawani from the middle linebacker position. 
Neka Nawani during the offseason. She's a stunt double for King Kong. Look at these stats this year. 13 tackles, 9 assists, 1 sack. Outstanding season for Neka Nawani. She gets overshadowed quite a bit with Yashi Reich and Chantel Taylor. But she's consistently been one of the better middle linebackers in the game. Liz Gorman, the Hall of Famer, saw her warming up before the game. And she predicts at some point in her career, Neka Nawani will be right behind Gorman in the Hall of Fame. That is a big time, big time note from Liz Gorman. I'm sure Neka Nawani loves hearing that. Third and nine, high snap. Matheny does recover and dumps it off. That pass complete to her center, Jenna Weiss. KK Matheny, she's been doing this all season long, just checking underneath, and she gets five, 10 yards at a pop. They have the receivers run off the safeties, go underneath to their center, Jenna Weiss, and watch, it works out Stanley. High snap, bang, right out, one-on-one, -on -one, you get five yards with your center. I love that call. That Weiss catch will set up a fourth and four. The Seattle offense starting to click a little bit. Matheny has really done a wonderful job in taking this very complex offensive playbook, absorbing it, and having everybody play better around her. Absolutely. She made this a ball control passing offense now. That was a little bit of a jump by Chantel Taylor. No call. That could be encroachment right there. And that's what Seattle is barking about, that that should have been encroachment on Chicago. You can't cross the fucking neutral zone! You can't cross it, no matter what! It's a... No, any time, it's a damn... It's a... It's, you guys, come on! What did I just say? Don't jump offside! Jesus Christ! It looked like that Chicago defense was trying to anticipate the snap, and Seattle was purposely trying to draw them off. K.K. Matheny changed the cadence. Outstanding veteran play by the quarterback, and Chicago jumped into the neutral zone. Should have been a penalty. A big defensive stand here for Chicago as Seattle faces a fourth and four. Matheny back in the shotgun, looking to the left. That's Danica Brace. She's running some great patterns in the flat. That completed against Dominique Collins. They run a trip set out wide to the left. They run the receivers off. We just spoke about it. Danica Brace, tight end position, breaks in the flat. Just throw a dart to her. She gets five yards. Another good play by KK Matheny. Brace is definitely not the home run hitter on this offense. That would be Bren Renda, but a very reliable tight end. And they're starting to mix her in a bit into the passing trade. The little things are hurting Chicago. Go back to Chantel Taylor lining up in the neutral zone, nullified the interception by Dominique Collins. Not to mention the pass interference that kept this drive alive. We are officially at the two minute mark. Seattle losing some opportunities, but up eight. LFL Mobile, giving you access to the gridiron goddesses of the LFL with exclusive photos, videos, live game reporting, and fan promotions. LFL Mobile, download on your Android or iPhone. Back to the 2015 Legends Cup, and we've got one of the bigger personalities mic'd up. Chicago Bliss head coach Keith Hack, not happy with what's going on this afternoon. I told her not to go down straight down the middle of the field. I told her to bow out this way. God damn it, I told him! Wake the fuck up! Every time! What happened on that? The lineman release. We've been over this how many times? Everything we practice for, they're doing. You're just not fucking executing. What did I just fucking say? What did I just say? Don't jump off sides! They're running it wrong. They're running it wrong. I told him already. I told him before to play. It is obvious the two-time defending champs did not come to play so far tonight. And that is surprising of a coach Keith Hack-led team to be not prepared mentally to play in this ball game. You're right. Coach Hack, I think he's ready. I don't think his team is, though. We knew Seattle was going to come out and try to take Chris Del Harris out of the game, and they've done that. Chicago is not answering. A first and ten high snap. Matheny looking in the flat. Has Schnorr. And Schnorr gaining seven yards on the reception. 
They found a weakness. They're going to do that all night long. Neka Nawani, she lines up in the middle. She can't physically possibly get over to cover Snore in the flat. Here it is. Watch Nawani. She's in the middle, number three. There's no way she can get out there in time. You're going to get at least five or six yards. Ball at the Chicago four-yard line. Stevie Schnorr, believe it or not, is the leading rusher coming into the Legends Cup just ahead of Chicago's Ferrari. Two great backs on both sides of the football. Second and three now, ball at the Chicago four-yard line. Matheny under center. Stevie Schnorr flanked in the backfield. She's going to get a toss play, cuts it back to the inside. And that is a Seattle touchdown. Stevie Schnorr is such an outstanding athlete. This cut she makes here on two quick, solid defensive backs is just incredible. Watch this. Deandra Fry and Dominique Collins outside. They are there, and they can fly. She cuts inside on both of them and goes into the end zone. It is amazing how great of a back she's turned into. Stevie Schnorr, of course, coming down from Canada. Hey! Watch the ball! That's coach Keith Hack advising his front line to watch the ball as Seattle is trying to pull him off sides. This will be a two-point attempt from the three-yard line. Matheny back in the shotgun. Good snap this time, rolling right, pointing traffic out. Nobody in the back of the end zone. So our score will remain 14 to nothing Seattle. Lashonda Fowler, she usually runs that play all the way to the far corner. Matheny thought she would be out there, but there was nobody there. Here it is. She goes right. The whole defense owes, follows her. Fowler should be wide open in that right there when she threw the football, but for some reason, Fowler pulled it up. And that time, Chantel Taylor holding up KK Matheny. Those two have a lot of respect for one another. A first and ten. Now Chicago almost forced to start throwing the ball. They have to throw the football. We mentioned that in the pregame. They have to throw the football. Fur back to throw in the pocket, creating time, evading rushers. A dangerous pass to Jamie Fornell. And look at Stevie Schnorr. She is playing possessed. She is possessed with the rest of the Seattle defense. Watch the pressure on Fur. Watch the coverage by the secondary. There's nothing out there. Heather Fur actually gets lucky. This isn't picked off. She just threw it out there. Bad play by Fur. They got lucky. And that was Danica Brace coming in late, almost taking Fur's head off. As this Seattle crowd now coming to life. Second and ten. Fakes the handoff to Harris. Quick screen to Jamie Fornell. Great open field tackle by Melee Gilmore. That's what Chicago has to do to get Fur's arm ready to go. A quick screen pass for Fornell. She's a great athlete. Going to get some yards, but more than that, it gets Fur a completion. They've got to get some of the pressure off Heather Fur. And if you're Seattle, this is the ideal place you wanted to be at this point in the game. Up 14 to nothing. And in essence, taking away Chicago's biggest weapon, Christelle Harris. A third and six handoff to Harris. Another stop by Stevie Schnorr. Harris only gaining three yards. This defensive game plan is outstanding. They wanted to take Harris out of the game, and they completely have. Another only a three-yard gain for Harris. She averaged over six yards for like her entire career. Tonight, they're shutting her down. I tell you what, the defensive scheme, it looks to be a run blitz. There's at least four or five coming every play. That's why they have to throw the football. They have the receivers. Fur's been doing the last two games. She has to start doing it tonight. A fourth and three, and here's another ill-advised penalty. You're going to go from a fourth and three to a fourth and eight here. Five-yard penalty. Still still down. Ball start for Stell Harris. Let's get another look at this. Yeah, you can see Harris definitely took off early. And that's going to cost Chicago five yards, and this crowd is loving every moment of it. I think the entire Chicago team must have got out the wrong side of the bed this morning. They just didn't show up here in the first half. And 
And here comes that Seattle eighth man. Fourth and eight. This place is deafening. Ball at the 17. Fur back to pass. Looking down the right side of the field. Has a receiver. And that was Jamie Fornell. As Seattle will take over deep inside of Chicago territory. I actually like the call fourth and eight. You go deep one on one. The problem is Fur has not played with Fornell that long. Not like she's ready for Allie Alberts and knows all of Alberts' moves. Fornell just came in a couple weeks ago. They're not on yet. And now you're giving this offense a 17-yard field. He's calling 21 guys. What's your fucking gap that Danica's in? And then on fourth down, you run a double go? Do you think they don't expect this? They actually did expect that. I'm with Coach Hack on that one. Fornell was open. Ferg just didn't get her the ball. First and 10 now. Ball at the 17-yard line. Matheny remains in the shotgun where she feels most comfortable. Now looking to the corner of the end zone. The ball sailing. And somehow Jessica Hopkins, the six-year veteran Hall of Fame nominee coming up clutch. That's why she's a Hall of Fame nominee. Most receivers would wait for the football. This looks like it's going to be intercepted and floated. She comes back to the football, puts her body between the defender and the football, and brings it down. That's why she should be a Hall of Famer maybe next year. A big play for this Seattle offense. Up 14 to nothing already. This could potentially be an early dagger. If they go up over 20 points, and it's going to be very tough for Chicago. Seattle electing to call a timeout and go over some strategy here. You have got to hit those so much faster. You're voting and let the motherfuckers come over and help. You hit that right away for touchdown. God damn it, we've got to fire that shit in. So watch for the play action lineman release. They're going to do that stupid bubble thing again. Heather, just ignore your girl. Jump that lineman release, all right? You guys got a fucking block! How bad do you want it? I tell you what, 21-0 with three us getting the ball in the second half, you can put a fork in it. You gotta score here! You have to block! Block your ass off! Stay low! Coach Michelson fully understanding the importance of going up big here. You don't get this opportunity often against Chicago. If they go up three scores, on the two-time defending champ, it'll be simply unbelievable first half tonight. Chicago really mailing it in in the first half. They're gonna need to come out with a lot more conviction in the second half. Now Seattle with the handoff to Fowler. Fowler getting to the outside. And that'll be a Seattle score. Mecca Nawani for Chicago had Fowler dead to rights on the five yard line, simply didn't make the tackle. I don't know what else to say. We, I mean, I knew they weren't ready defensively. Watch number three, Nawani. She makes a great play getting through the line. She has Fowler back on the four or five yard line and tries to grab a jersey instead of a making a tackle. And when you miss on Fowler, she goes in the end zone. How does that Hall of Fame nomination for Neka Nawani look now? I'm going to talk to Liz Gorman at halftime, and uh, we'll take that back. Under 10 seconds remaining. Matheny in the shotgun. The extra point attempt. Nothing doing. That is Chantel Taylor, who's been one of the only bright spots of this Chicago team in the first half. The only bright spot. Chantel Taylor came to play the rest of the team. I think they're still in Chicago. Taylor's unblockable right now. K.K. Matheny absolutely has no time, nowhere to throw the football. That's all Chantel Taylor. Chicago will have one opportunity. They do have a timeout remaining. And Heather Furr has the arm to stretch the field. Crowd coming back to life. Allie Alberts in motion. Furr looking into the flat. Now down the field has Allie Alberts. Alberts coming back for the ball. But unfortunately, Chicago runs out of time. They did have a timeout remaining, but the clock ran out. Fur had Alberts open. Two more yards, just a touchdown. Somehow the ball slipped a little bit because Fur's got the gun to get it there. Alberts had to come back. 
she puts that in the end zone, it would have been a touchdown for Chicago. That is the official end of the first half. Now let's go to Audra Marie. Hey guys, I'm down here on the field with Coach Hack. Coach Hack, you're down by 20. Did you expect this coming into Seattle? Absolutely not. You know, we're just not executing. And I was afraid we weren't ready defensively. Normally, you know, we give the handout out and we got a lot of time to prep and there was just not enough time. And everything that was in the handout is what they're running and the girls just aren't executing. So that's what we're going to do about it. Best of luck in the second half. Back to you guys. Knowing Keith Hack, there's got to be a fire burning inside of him right now. An unbelievable 20 to nothing score with a surprising Seattle mist controlling both sides of the ball. Back with halftime festivities after this.